In our earlier lesson, we have covered certain theoretical facets of leverage analysis that is as a part 1. In this lesson, today we are going to certain, pra certain practical things, we are going to work out certain practical problems in this lesson. Now, as we all know that every business firm needs capital, capital can be of ownership capital and loan capital. Now, as a prudent financial manager, one has to be very careful while employing uh, the different components of capital that normally we refer it as a capital structure. So, capital structure should be in such a way that where the cost of capital is very nominal and the rate of return is very high. Keeping in view this, we have to employ the mix that is optimal mix of debt and ownership capital. Now, to start any business, we can either employ solely ownership capital or solely loan capital, but as a manager, we have to maximize the profitability, hence we have to go for a mix which gives maximum return to the firm. In this connection, as you all know, ownership capital can be of equity share capital, preference share capital and loan capital can be of debentures or long term loans, etc. Now, as you all aware that the preference shareholders by name, preference shareholders have certain preferential rights. Number one is to get a fixed rate of dividend at the end of each year and getting back the capital invested when the company goes into liquidation. These two are preferential rights of preference shareholders, whereas equity shareholders, they are the real owners of the firm, whether the firm incurs profit or incurs loss it is they have to bear. When we talk about the debentures or debt capital, they are entitled for fixed rate of interest. The interest which is allowed is tax free. So, it is treated as normal expenditure and will be deducted from the uh, gross income as it is. So, whatever we pay towards interest is, is tax exempted. Now, for designing the capital structure, it helps a lot to maximize the profit because the dividend is payable after uh, the dividend whatever we pay to the shareholders is of tax component. Hence, leverage analysis is basically concerned with the two things. Number one is employing fixed capital as you all aware that every business firm requires fixed capital and working capital. Fixed capital once invested, it, invested in any fixed assets, it cannot be taken back until unless you incur heavy losses. So, while employing the fixed capital that is while employing the fixed cost one has to be very careful. Similarly, while employing the debt capital also a financial manager has to take utmost care. The dividend payable to the dividend share preference shareholders and the interest payable to the debtors is fixed in nature. Leverage analysis helps us in employing capital fixed assets as well as employing debt capital because these two components are very vital for any management. Leverage analysis is basically concerned with the mix of debt and equity components. As explained earlier, the debt capital is cheaper than equity capital, hence one is prompted to go for debt capital. Now, as I have already explained, the sources of finance can be either equity share capital, preference share capital, debenture capital or it can be mix of all these three components. Basically, we can say that debt capital and ownership capital. Within ownership capital, we have preference shareholders and equity shareholders. These two are the dividend whatever is payable to the equity shareholders or preference shareholders will be only after tax. Hence, it does not affect the profitability that is profit before tax. So, only thing is we have to keep in mind or we have to think about the debt capital. As I have already explained, the debt of the cost of debt is cheaper than the cost of equity because it has it is it has it is tax exempted. Hence, the cost of debt is cheaper than the cost of equity. So, while employing the debt capital or employee or equity capital, one has to take utmost care. Now, let us let us uh, 
assume that a firm requires 100 lakhs of capital. So, as I told you the capital can be of either debt capital or equity capital that is ownership capital. Now, let us say a firm requires 100 lakhs capital. So, this 100 capital can be either employed through solely debt or solely equity that is ownership capital or it can be a mix of both. Now, let us take uh, in a le let us take a hypothetical case uh, where the debt is 0 and equity is 100 debt is 10, equity is 90, debt is 30, equity is 70, debt is 50, equity is uh, 50, where the debt is 80 and equity is 20, uh, debt is 100 and equity is 0. Now, when you observe, when you try to calculate the debt asset ratio or debt equity ratio, debt asset ratio is nothing but the total debt divided by the assets. Asset is nothing but the total capital employed. Similarly, debt equity ratio, debt equity ratio is equal to debt divided by the equity share capital. Look at the table which is given where the debt component is given at 0 lakhs, 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs, 30 lakhs, 50 lakhs. 80 lakhs and 100 lakhs. Similarly, equity is 100 lakhs, 90, 80, 70, 50, 20, 0. When you compute the debt asset ratio, it is 0, 10, 20, 30, 50, 80, 100. When you compute the debt equity ratio, it shows that it is 0, 11.1 percent, 25 percent, 43 percent, 100 percent, 400 percent and infinity. It gives us very clearly that uh, the debt as the debt increases, the percentage also increases. Now, there is there are several methods for computing debt and asset ratio and debt equity ratio. One of the methods could be debt asset ratio is, is equal to debt by equity ratio divided by 1 plus debt equity ratio. Similarly, when you would like to compute the debt equity ratio that is D by E ratio is equal to debt by asset ratio divided by 1 minus debt by asset ratio. Let us take a manufacturing form and compute the operating and, operating and financial leverages and how it is going to help the management in making certain managerial decisions. Now, look at the problem which is given in this example. The installed capacity of the firm is 600 units, operating capacity of the firm is 400 units, the selling price per unit is rupees 10, sales 400 units, variable cost rupees 6 per unit. Now, basically operating leverage and financial leverage, when we compute the operating leverage, the fixed cost will go on changing in the sense we compute the operating leverage at different levels of fixed cost. So, we are trying to take different levels of fixed cost and compute the operating leverages. For computing the financial leverage, what would we is the total capital required for a firm will be mixed in at different proportions and will calculate the financial leverages. Now, for this example, let us take the fixed cost for situation A it is 400, for situation B it is, it is 1000, for situation C it is 1200. Now, here what we are trying to do is we are trying to do we are trying to increase the fixed cost at three different levels that is 400, 1000 and 1200. So, situation A, situation B and situation C under these situations how the operating leverage is going to affect let us uh, uh, let us uh, com compute it. Now, as it is let us take situation A, B, C sales remains constant that is 4000, 4000, 4000 for all the situations, variable cost at the rate of 6 per unit it is 2400, 2400 and 2400. Now, contribution that is contribution is equal selling price minus variable cost which is popularly known as contribution which is 1600 for situation A, situation B 16 and situation C also it is 1600 fixed cost as we are trying to change the fixed cost to different levels and trying to compute the operating leverage. Hence, fixed cost for situation A 400 B 1000 C 1200. Now, operating profit that is 
contribution minus fixed cost will be equivalent to operating profit which is also known as earnings before interest and tax which is coming to 1200 600 400 respectively for situation a b c now operating leverage is equal to contribution divided by the operating profit that is earnings before interest and tax for situation A, it is coming to 1.33, for situation B, it is coming to 2.66 and situation C, it is 4. Now, as I have already explained, operating leverage is a relationship between the sales and fixed cost. Now, in this example, let us take that if 10 percent change in volume will lead to 13.3 percent change in operating profit, operating profit. Similarly, if you take situation C, 10 percent change in sales will lead to 40 percent change in operating profit. Similarly, let us try to calculate the financial leverages. Operating leverage for situation A, B, C is 1.33, 2.66 and 4 respectively for situations A, B and C. Now, operating leverage really reveals that a 10 percent change in sales will lead to 13.3 percent in for situation A. Similarly, a 10 percent change in sales situation B leads to 26.6 percent increase in operating profit and for situation C 10 percent change in sales will lead to 40 percent increase in operating profit that is before interest that is profit before interest. Now, it is very clear from this table that as the fixed cost increases, so the operating leverage is also increases which shows very high risk. It is very risk. When the operating leverage increases, the earnings per share also will increase and the profitability will also increase. But we, as the profit goes up or as the operating leverage goes up, it is very risky. A, a prudent financial manager has to be uh, exercise at most care here because uh, whenever there is a positive sign it is it is advisable but in case of any negative things the firm has to suffer a lot hence keeping in view this one has to be very careful in uh, one has to be very careful in employing the uh, fixed cost that is operating leverage now let us compute the financial leverages uh, for all these situations that is A, B, C under different components of capital that is different mixes of capital. Now, as it is let us assume that the capital required for, for the, the capital required for this business is 4000. This 4000 can be either uh, mobilized through ownership capital or loan capital or we can go for the mix of these two even within the mix we can have at a different levels. For the purpose of computing financial leverages, let us have different plans. Plan X, where we will be taking debt and once capital equally that is 1 is to 1. Under plan Y, we will be taking 3 is to 1. So, you will be employing more debt capital and lower and less amount of equity share capital. Plan Z, where we will be employing more amount of uh, equity capital that is ownership capital and lesser amount of uh, debt capital. So, the ratios for x is 1 is to 1, for y plan 3 is to 1, for z plan it is 1 is to 3. Now, these different plans can be applied to all the situations that is situation A, situation B, situation C and we will see the results how it is going to influence on the profitability. When we talk about the financial leverage, financial leverage is nothing but the relationship between the profit, operating profit and profit before tax that is operating financial leverage is equal to earnings before interest and tax that is operating profit divided by the profit before tax. So, it establishes a kind of relationship between the operating profit and the profit before tax. Let us take out the situation A under different plans that is x, y, z. Under, situa under situation A, the capital, now let us assume that the capital required will be equivalent to rupees 4000 that is total capital will be 4000. This 4000 can be 
can be taken up at different mixes of debt and equity capital. Now, plan X 1 is to 1 that is 2000 and 2000 that is 4000 for plan Y. 3000 debt capital and 1000 equity capital, 4000 rupees total capital. For situation for plan Z, 1000 will be debt capital and 3000 will be one speed capital. So, the total capital required is 4000 in all the different plans. Now, operating profit for situation A is rupees 1200, it is uniform to all the plans that is X, Y, and Z. Only thing, only difference here could be the rate of interest will change because we are employing uh, different amounts of debt capital under plan X, Y, Z. The interest rate applicable here is 10 percent. So, if you take the plan X, the interest payable is rupees 200 only, 200 debt capital at the rate of 10 percent that is 200 rupees. Similarly, case Y, we are employing more amount of debt capital that is 3000 rupees debt capital at the rate of 10 percent. So, interest is 300. Similarly, for plan Z it is 100 rupees. Operating profit minus interest will be equivalent to the profit before tax popularly known as PBT. So, which, which is coming to 1000 for plan X, 900 for plan Y, 1100 pl for plan Z. Now, it is very easy to compute the financial leverage that is operating profit divided by the profit before tax which comes to 1.20 for plan X financial leverage. Uh, it is very easy to compute the financial leverage which comes to 1.2, 1.33, 1 1.09 for, for plans X, Y and Z. Similarly, let us take out the situation B and work out at under different plans that is X, Y, Z. For situation B, the operating profit is rupees 600, capital required could be same that is 4000, but different proportion as we have already seen in situation A that is 2000 uh, debt capital and equity capital 2000 for plan Y 3000 debt capital and 1000 equity capital, 1000 debt capital and 3000 equity capital for plan Z. The operating profit for situation B is 600 which will be uniform or common to all the plans 600, 600, 600. The interest which is going to be changed which is going to be charged here is rupees 200, 300, 100. Now, profit before tax which comes to 6, 400, 300, 500 financial leverage could be 1.5 to 1.2 this is in case of situation B. Similarly, let us work out for situation C. The capital as it is the capital required is 4000 rupees that can be financed in different proportions of debt and equity as we have seen under different plans that is X, Y, Z. Now, the operating profit for plan C is 400 rupees which remains constant only the interest varies. Now, for plan X the interest could be 200 rupees, for plan Y the interest could be 300 rupees, for plan Z the interest could be 100. Now, the profit before tax will be 200 for situation for plan X, for plan Y it is 100, for plan Z it is 300 rupees. Now, financial leverage as it is you know how to compute it the financial leverage will be 2, 4, 1.33. Now, it is very clear from this problem that a marginal increase of 10 percent in operating profit will lead to 20 percent that is double that is double in case of plan Y. In case of plan Y a minor a minor change a insignificant change of 10 percent will lead to 40 percent change in the uh, profit before tax. Similarly, 10 percent that is a marginal difference, a marginal increase in sales of Y plan will lead to 40 percent increase in, in, the, in the profit before tax. These are all uh, different financial leverages for situation A, B, C under plans of X, Y and Z. As we all know 
we can also compute the combined leverage. Combined leverage is nothing but the operating leverage multiplied by the financial leverage. From the above table, let us try to compute the combined leverage. Let us take situation C and plan Y. Combined leverage is nothing but when you multiply operating leverage in uh, combined leverage is nothing but operating leverage into financial leverage. In the above example, for situation C, operating leverage is 4. Similarly, financial leverage for plan Y, it is 4. 4 into 4 will give you 16, that is combined leverage. Now, under this, what happens is we have sales of rupees 4000 rupees, a marginal increase in sales or marginal decrease in sales will have lot of impact on the profitability of the firm. Now, let us take the sales as it is we have worked out for 4000 rupees, a 10 percent marginal increase of 10 percent will be 4400 and 10 percent decrease that it will be 3600. Sales minus variable cost at the rest at the rate the variable cost will be at the rate of rupees 6 per unit which comes to 2400 uh, and 2640 for 10 percent increase and 2160 for 10 percent decrease. Now, contribution will be 1600 and 1760 and 1440. Contribution minus fixed cost. Fixed cost is 1200 which remains constant for all these things. Now, fixed cost is 1200, 1200, 1200. Now, the operating profit will be rupees 400, 560, 240. When we deduct the interest chargeable on debt capital that is rupees 300, deduct the interest which is chargeable to the debt is rupees 300, 300 and 300. Now, the profit before tax is 100 in normal case or uh, 260 that is plus 260 for 10 percent increase, for 10 percent decrease it is minus 60. Leverage analysis plays vital role in financial management. As a prudent financial manager, one has to be very careful while employing fixed assets and fixed assets and employing debt capital because the fixed assets will lead to operating leverage and debt capital leads to financial leverage. These two will have higher uh, impact on the profitability of a firm. As we have seen in the above example, operating leverage was uh, too small and it was too high at different stages. It is very clear if the operating leverage is low, if the operating leverage is low, it is not that risky. When the operating leverage is very high, it is very risky. As the risk increases, the profitability also increases, but it may have adverse impact in case of uh, negative uh, effects in the market. Similarly, financial leverage as the debt capital increases, so the financial leverage also increases as the financial leverage increases, so the earnings per share also will increase. Now, it is very clear if the operating leverage increases, it is very high risky. See, it, though it is increasing the profitability, it is high, highly risk, highly risk one. Similarly, financial leverage also as it increases the financial leverage increases as the financial leverage in their leverage increases the profitability will also increase. Uh, now, when we employ debt capital that could be taken before the tax. So, when you would like to multiply the earnings per share what you can do is you can go for the optimal mix of preference and equity share capital because these two are after tax. Now, if you increase, if you go for preference share capital, naturally the profitability that is earnings per share will increase. Leverage analysis helps a finance manager to take decisions regarding the employment of fixed capital as well as the debt capital. As you have noticed that operating leverage was too small or too high at different situations under different plans, the finance leverage was very nominal and it was very high. Now, it is very clear that if the operating leverage is high, financial leverage is high, it implies that it is very risky. A manager has to be very careful. 
if the as long as the firm earns profit it's okay but in case of in, in, in case of incurring losses it will have adverse effects hence one has to be very careful in having higher operating leverage and higher financial leverage similarly higher operating leverage and lower financial leverage to the extent possible one has to reduce the fixed cost to the minimum because fixed cost is fixed in very if is fixed in nature it cannot be uh, re, it cannot be reduced so to the extent possible one has to see that it must be within the reach that is controllable now other situation could be uh, lower amount lower operating leverage and higher financial leverage it is ideal situation to any business firm to the extent possible one has to employ lower operating leverage and higher financial leverage the financial leverage will help to increase the uh, earnings per share and profitability of the firm lower operating leverage and lower financial leverage is is implies that it is most uh, cautious state of affairs of a financial manager so if these two are low naturally one is one will be in a very safer way ఈ కార్యక్రమాలకు సంబంధించిన సూచనలను సలహాలను ఆహ్వానిస్తున్నాం చిరునామా డైరెక్టర్ ఆడియో విజువల్ ప్రొడక్షన్ అండ్ రీసెర్చ్ సెంటర్ డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ ప్రొఫెసర్ జి రామ్రెడ్డి మార్గ్ రోడ్ నంబర్ ఫార్టీ సిక్స్ జూబ్లీ హిల్స్ హైదరాబాద్ ఫైవ్ ల్యాక్స్ థర్టీ త్రీ